Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. In this part, we are going to continue with topic 3 on numerical computation and expression. In the class last time, we have covered about identifiers. To recap, identifiers are names that we use for our class name such as my class 1 to 3, method name such as main, variable such as int, dollar sign number, and constant such as final int number. We have also seen last time that identifiers can be made up of letters, digits, dollar sign, and underscore character, but it cannot start with a digit. A digit can be contained in the identifier as long as it is not the first character. We also cannot use symbols such as question mark or percentage, and spaces are also not permitted. Reserved words such as public, class, static, and void also cannot be used as identifiers. However, for example, if you want to use similar reserved word such as public, it can be used as an identifier if we change the case of it where we can have the word public where P is in capital letter. This is because they are case sensitive, so public or in small letters are different than the word public with P in the capital letter. Also, the identifiers can be of any length. During the last class, we went through this code provided here. By convention, we know that the variable names should start with a lowercase letter, class names start with an uppercase letter, and constant names are in uppercase letter, where two words are separated by underscore. This is shown in the code in the green box. However, if we do not follow the convention, our code is still correct, only that it can be confusing to other programmers as the convention is being used by all programmers. We also have looked at the eight primitive data types where integers are represented by byte, short, int, and long. Floating point numbers such as float and double, characters as char and boolean that gives either true or false values. Continuing on from where we left last time, let's look at overflow. Overflow happens when the storage for a variable cannot hold the result. This relates to the memory and values that the data type can hold. This example here is by using the type int. The maximum value that int can hold is slightly more than 2 billion. However, if we want to store the value of 3 billion using the data type int, it will print out the value minus 1,294,976,296. This is because 3 billion has overflowed the int capacity. So, instead of using the data type int, we can use long or double, which can hold a larger capacity than int. This slide here shows the complete program that you can run on your JGRASP IDE. At the last two lines, we use double instead of int to enable the value 3 billion or 3.0E9 to be displayed. As we have the different kinds of data types that have their own capacities, it is possible to assign a value of one type to a variable of other types. As shown here, we can assign to the other type further to the right, but not to the type further to the left. Referring to the 3 billion example earlier, we can assign int to double, but we cannot assign a double to int. Let's look at this example. We have int number equal to 5. Then we have double, double number equal to number. What happens here is, we are giving the variable double number, that is type double, the same value as the variable number type int. As double is a floating point number, when we do system.out.println double number, it will display 5.0. Looking at the other example where we have double number equal to 5, then int, int number equal to number. Here, 
we try to give the double value to the int. When you compile this code, it will give you an error, incompatible types, possible lossy conversion from double to int. You can try this in JGrasp to see the error that appears. When we combine the different types, if at least one of the operands or numbers is a floating point type and the rest are integers, the result will be a floating point type. Let's look at these examples. Say that we have 15 divided by 3. 15 and 3 are of type int. The output will be the value 5. But if we do 15 divided by 3.0, which is an int type, the number 15 divided by a double type, the number 3.0, the output will be type double. That's why it will show 5.0 as the output. Similarly, if we do 15.0, which is a double, divide by 3, which is an int, it will give 5.0. If both numbers are double, such as 15.0 divide by 3.0, the output will be type double, which is 5.0. Thus, this proves that when there is at least one number is a floating point type, such as data type double or float, the output will be a floating point type. Java is said to be strongly typed. You cannot assign a double value to a variable that is declared as integer. For example, you cannot do int int variable equal to 7.0. This is because int variable is type int. It cannot hold a floating point value. If you run the code on JGrasp, it will display an error. However, you can do double double variable equal to 7. When you do system.printline double variable, it will display the output as 7.0 because double has a decimal point. In assignment evaluation, the expression on the right hand side of the assignment operator which is the equal symbol, is evaluated first. The result from the right-hand side is used to set the value of the variable on the left-hand side of the assignment operator. For example, total marks equal to carry marks plus final exam marks. The sum of carry marks and final exam marks is calculated and the result is kept in the variable called total marks. Similarly, if we have rect area equal to length times width, the result of length times width is kept in the variable called rect area. Going a step back, let's look at how we can initialize variables. A variable that has been declared but not given a value is said to be uninitialized. An example on declaring variable is by writing the data type and the name of the variable, such as int sum value. Uninitialized primitive variables may have a default value. However, it is a good practice not to rely on a default value, but instead initialize it ourselves. Usually, Java compilers will give an error or warning if we attempt to use an uninitialized variable. For example, Say that we declare our variable as int lucky number. We do not give it any value, so we did not initialize it. We have only declared it. If we do system.printline lucky number, when we compile it, it will give us an error as the variable has not been initialized. Referring to the example code here, class variables has a default value such as static int number one it will display the value 0, which is the default value for int. However, for int number 2, which is a local variable, it has no default value. We need to initialize it to some values, otherwise it will give us an error when we compile it. In the example here, we initialize it to 456. To protect against an uninitialized variable and to keep the compiler happy, Assign a value when the variable is declared. 
it can be initialized to the value 0 if no specific value is known. To declare and initialize a variable, the syntax is the data type, the name of the variable, equal sign, and the expression or value. For example, int count equal to 0. This shows the declaration and initialization within the same statement. We can also separate the declaration and initialization. For example, in the yellow box, we have int count to declare. On the next line, we initialize it by writing count equal to zero. Let's look at another example on declaring and initializing variables. If we write int number one equal to five, int number two equal to 10, we are declaring and initializing the variables called number one and number two to the value of five and 10. Previously, we have learned that we can declare several variables without the need to rewrite the data type by using comma instead of semicolon. Similarly, we can initialize them by writing int number one equal to five comma number two equal to 10 semicolon or doing it separately first we declare the variables int number one comma number two semicolon then we initialize them number one equal to five semicolon number two equal to ten however if we declare the variable first we cannot initialize them by combining them using the comma if we do number one equal to five comma number two equal to ten semicolon it will give us an error. Now that we know how to declare and initialize the variable, how do we display it on the screen by referring to the variable itself? Let's look at this example. Here we have int count equal to 250. To display the output, we use system.out.println. We want to display the sentence or the string literal, the count is, so we write that within the double quotes. To display the value of the variable count in the system.out.println, we combine the value of count with the string literal using the plus symbol. Plus here means we are combining the string literal and the value of variable count, which is 250. So the statement system.out.println double quote, the count is closing double quote plus count will display the count is 250, where 250 refers to the value of our variable that we had initialized to 250. Let's look through another example. Here we have a class called Geometry. The file name is geometry.java. We declare and initialize a variable type int called as sites to the value 7. On the next line is system.out.println and the sentence a heptagon has and concatenate, which is the plus sign, and the value of the variable sites, then concatenate with another string literal of sites. Take note that sites without the double quotes and sites with the double quotes are different. Without the double quotes, we are referring to the value of the variable called sites. With double quotes, that is the string literal. At this point, sites has the value of 7. On the next line, we assign the value 10 to the same variable called sites. If we see the output at this part, it will display a decagon has 10 sites. When we do reassignment, we can no longer access the value 7 from previous initialization. This is because we give the same variable called sites a new value, which now is 10. Now, we reassign sites to the value 12. We no longer can access the value 10 or 7 from previous assignment. If you run the whole code, it will display a heptagon has 7 sites, a decagon has 10 sites, a dodecagon has 12 sites. However, the final value of sites is 12. The value 7 and 10 cannot be accessed anymore. 
What should we do if we want to access the value 7, 10 and 12? We can do by having three separate variables. Here we have int sites 1, sites 2, sites 3. Then we assign sites 1 equal to 7, sites 2 equal to 10 and sites 3 equal to 12. This means that at any part within our code, we can access the value 7, 10 and 12 by referring to the specific variable name. In the previous example, we reuse the same variables by giving it different values. As a summary of this part, we have looked at overflow and assignment compatibilities where we looked at the different data types, for example, going from int to double, but we cannot go from double to int. We have also looked at how to declare and initialize the variables and a simple screen output where we combine some sentences with the variables to show what is the output of the variable without writing the numbers itself.